Thank you, Coach. EA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to Oakland, California. This was the scene a few minutes ago. The folks around the stadium clad in silver and black going to make every last game played in Oakland count. They're ready to go as their Raiders get set to match up. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line with the Denver Broncos. Now a play fake here on first down. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And all the way inside the 35 before he goes out of bounds. A huge play there right off the bat. And even 40 yards. So the big play changes the complexion of things. Here's first and 10 just outside the 30. On first and 10, here's Keenum. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. Oh, boy, partner, did that just happen? I've got my hand over my eyes right now because likely, like him, it's going to haunt my dreams, too. He was wide open. How did he overthrow him there? Uh, defensively, just very lucky. You know that they got away with one there. Second and 10 from the 33-yard line. Keenum again here on second and 10. He's going to loft one. And he is into the end zone for a Denver touchdown. Cortland Sutton, 33 yards. And the Broncos have taken the early lead. Not a bad way to start it. And I think that that was part of their script because so many teams script their opening possessions. And, and whether it's just that possession or even deeper into the half, sometimes it's 15 to 30 plays. That had to be one in there where they call a shot play. Go for the big one, and they got it done. McManus's point after is good, and it's now a 7-0 game. Now McManus on to kick this one off. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. As Oakland comes back out to get the football, let's look back to what they did last week, Charles, the win over Pittsburgh. Surprising victory. Their other two wins this year had come over Cleveland and Arizona, so this was their biggest win of the season. No doubt about it. I mean, this moved them to 3-10. and 10. It's been a while since we've seen John Gruden in that famous fist pump that we like to see out of him, right? Really reveling in that one. Then the next day... Oakland announced that they'll have a new general manager next year. So if you look forward, with all of the draft picks they're starting to accumulate, obviously the move to Las Vegas in two seasons, that's an attractive spot because you start to put together a ball club, use that young talent, use that draft capital, they could hit Vegas with a vengeance. On second down, Martin. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. The gain of four that time as the drive continues. Now that's the way to do it. Hand it to someone with vision and good footwork, and they add a little, little bit of power, and you find a way to pick up first downs. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Carnell on first down, throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. Jared Cook, the tight end, was the target. And that'll bring up second down. Charles already trailing by touchdown early. This offense, how imperative is it for them to get points out of this drive? Well, they feel like they have to go ahead and match because of what was already on the board against their defense. But I think even more so, you just want to avoid three and outs. You want to be able to stay on the field for a little while, let your defense catch their breath a little bit, even if you don't score any points. They run the counter with Martin. And he'll lose yardage. Brought down at the 32. It'll be a loss of a full three yards there, and it also brings up third down. 
Well, that play was over before it even got started. Thanks for nothing, huh? How about that? That sets up a very difficult third down call now. And the Broncos go to a nickel set on third down. Yeah, they've got an extra DB out there. Working from the gun, it's Carr. He finds Roberts, complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. A gain of 19 and picking up the first. Plenty of things to talk about here, partner, but to me, their defense gave up a touchdown on the first drive. How about how they're responding, coming back? That's a big third down pickup to keep their drive alive. Show a first and 10 now in Denver territory at the 49-yard line. Now Carr connects it to Roberts right side. And that play goes nowhere. Taken down, losing yardage at the 50 right at midfield. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained. So they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him and or two miss, but that window closed quickly. That pass play wound up for negative yardage, so here's second and 11. From midfield, here's Carr. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. Well, too much oomph, too much mustard there on that pass. Yeah, really turned it loose, didn't they? Really cut loose with that one. Sharp, strong. Didn't lead to a completion, though. Made it very difficult. Seventh play of this drive coming up, but a long way to go on third down. You got four. Down! 180! Push it hot! Now, car again. And too much juice. It'll be out of bounds, incomplete. I think we'll see more of them trying to get him the football out of the backfield. They love what he can do in open space, and they believe that he creates mismatches they can exploit. So on fourth down, here's Johnny Townsend to punt it. Things switch back over here to the Denver offense and the Broncos last week with that loss to San Fran. The playoff hopes really took a hit because now they're at six and seven after that 20 to 14 defeat. And it was a bit of a surprise for them to go to San Francisco and get beat because they were on a pretty good run right there. They'd won some convincing games in the previous weeks. Looked like they were going to make a strong finish, and they still might. But that game right there, that might be the deciding game to keep them out of the playoffs in 2018. Obviously, they could still finish 9-7. and seven. Their final three games, they are home against Cleveland, at Oakland, and then back home against the Chargers. Lindsey, the undrafted free agent, had a great college career at Colorado, but what he did to start this season and the way he came out of the gate, really impressive. And sometimes guys just fit. NFL teams where maybe you didn't see it coming. Because Phil Lindsay, as you mentioned, had an excellent college career at Colorado. But different question marks from different teams about size. Can he do this? Can he do that? The answer is he can do just about everything, and especially his ability to get out into open space out of the backfield and create big plays downfield. That's working quite well for him in the early going. Third down. That's Lindsey. And he will have the first down as he's up to his 17-yard line. And just four yards on the pickup, but that's good enough to extend the drive. Well, partner, none of these runs individually have added up to a whole lot. Now three plays, all three short runs, but together a first down. Yeah, it's amazing how the narrative changes when you string them together. They'll run it now, out of the gun. Big hold to the 30, and finally taken down at the 36-yard line. That good for 19 at a first down. He's quite an eyeful, isn't he? Big, strong, physical guy. When he came out of school, and when I looked at my draft board, I went back through my notes to see how I had him rated. The number two back on my board coming out of college. Why? As I mentioned, big, strong, powerful guy, faster than you would think. And has the ability to catch the football out of the backfield, something that we didn't know he truly possessed. We saw that in the offseason workout. Now he's putting his running ability to good use in the NFL. Looking for more there on first down, but this throw downfield incomplete. 
How about this offense already feeling good about themselves with a touchdown already in their first drive? They've certainly come out firing, even though that one was incomplete. With the 7 nothing lead, more apt to take a shot like that downfield? Hey, you're one to the good. Go ahead and try and press your advantage. Keenum will try again on second down. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. And he'll be brought down right at the 45-yard line. So they'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down. The completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. Came up a little short on the last pass play. They did get nine yards out of it, leaving him with his third and one. Back in his home state, Royce Freeman getting the carry. And he brings this up to the 46. Good enough for the first. Couple of first downs to kick off the drive. Here's first and 10 up at the 46. Hey, 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 hey. Go hot. They go play action here on first down. And his throw here's incomplete. Let's give some credit to the defensive guys on that play. Able to bat that one away. Sure looked like they were trying to hit the corner route. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Out of the gun, Keenum. He's going to float this one deep right side. And they went for a big play through the air on second down. Couldn't connect. Now it's third. One of the toughest things about playing defensive back is pattern reading, trying to figure out what they're doing. And on that one, they had to fly, just sending a guy downfield with the in route accompanying it, what people call a dagger route, trying to hit the guy underneath after the clear out. In this case, though, they're not able to get it done. Yeah, they said forget the underneath route. They went for the guy on the fly, but as you said, incomplete. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. You hear the calls for a penalty, but I just don't think so. I think in this situation, the defender was making sure his guy couldn't hold on to the football. So I don't see anything that warranted a flag. No, I'm with you. There was contact, but I'm happy they kept that flag in the back pocket. The Broncos send out their punter now as he's on to punt for the first time tonight. The Raiders offense now, they trot back out. And our game's hit a little bit of a lull here, a little bit of a snag. Punts on back-to-back -back drives. And old-school coaches don't necessarily mind that. Didn't turn it over, right? Didn't create a big play for the other team. Right now, what you're looking for is can you gain an advantage in field position? And that's what both teams are seeking right now. Yeah, they'll be seeking to gain that advantage here on this drive. On first down, Carr. And completes it to Jordan Nelson. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. 16 yards right off the bat in a first down. But it appears that they read man defense and went to the out route. And what you have to do on that one is the receiver's got to make sure he works the defender towards the middle of the field to give himself space to cut to the outside and have that ball delivered with good timing. And they got it done. Throwing on first down is Carr. An incomplete crisis averted. Almost picked. Instead, second down. Well, it certainly appears that they're going to try and keep getting him the football. That's the third time they've looked in his direction. Unfortunately, haven't completed one yet, but I'm not sure they're going to shy away from him. They feel like they've got something there, and they want to capitalize on I it. I think you're right. We're only in the first quarter, so a lot of opportunities ahead. On play action, now Carr. They'll tussle for it, and this is going to be caught. And a nice gain of 21 yards. 
I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. But slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. So a first and 10 now in Denver territory at the 43. On the ground, this is Jalen Richard. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. A right, quick observation, Brandon, because early on in this game, I'm seeing linebackers playing with their noses close to the line of scrimmage. And my guess is the wheels are turning on that other sideline. As a play caller, you're filing that away right now, aren't you? Yeah, you're trying to find that opportunity later on when you can play action them or stick something to them between the second and the third level. Now it's Martin. And he's going to be brought down at about the 33-yard line. A good run as he works his way for nine that time, and it'll leave him with a third and just a few inches. I thought that was a good call. Passing situation on second down. They hit him with a draw instead and pick up nice yardage. Yeah, because the draw, they're thinking pass when they see that initially defensively, right? But you know in today's NFL, most of the time on second and long when it's a passing situation, pass rushers are on the field. They're only thinking one thing, get to the quarterback. And oftentimes you can bypass them with a running play. It's caught. Nelson. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. First down, Raiders, the former Packer, Jordy Nelson, on the receiving end from Carr. Got to say, I was a little surprised to see him, Charles, come out in the shotgun on third and less than a yard. Yeah, but the way the NFL is nowadays, we hardly ever see anyone really run for it on short yardage. So they're going to throw the football more times than not. That was a nice, easy rhythm throw right there, and they pick up the first down. Throwing the out route incomplete. That's Roberts. And he'll take it down here just shy of the 15 at the 16-yard line. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Well, that's what you're looking for when you're wanting to throw the ball downfield. You want one of those guys who can play out on the perimeter, can play out wide, who can not only get open, but when they're covered, can uncover themselves downfield and create catches. Get down, get down! Back to the ground, Martin. There goes Martin, first down and more. And he is in. Touchdown, Raiders. Doug Martin, a 16-yard touchdown run. And the Raiders, they're within an extra point of tying this thing up. Now for the extra point, Daniel Carlson. Extra point by Carlson, up and good. And we are tied at seven. So we're right back where we started. All even as the kick's away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. They'll bring it back to just about the 25. Call it the 24-yard line. The Broncos offense now gets ready to head back onto the field. And they had a long drive going last time, but it stalled out. But still, maybe something positive to carry forward from that last drop. Well, a few different things that you carry forward. Number one, as you noted, they were moving it pretty well, so that gives them a lot of confidence. The second part is keep your defense off the field. Mm -hmm. Gives them a chance to rest up a little bit. And last but not least, uh -oh. you've taken a good look at what you've done on offense, noted where the weaknesses are, and you know when you want to come back to them. Like when you're organized with your points. Well Point done. A, B, and C. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. That was another good run, and he's having an excellent day. And right now, I don't think his team could have any more confidence in handing him the football. They'll come up now second and four from the 31. On second down, here's Keenum. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. It's a lot of contact going on there, and in the end, unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body. Everything looked pretty good until the finish. The Broncos on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. This is third and four. 
A shotgun snap for Keenum. And incomplete here to bring up fourth down as the rookie couldn't haul it in. Some mistakes already in the first quarter. If he holds on to that one, first down. Yeah, I guarantee you that at least one defensive back out there has reminded him of that fact, trying to get into his head and hoping that'll affect him the rest of the game. The Broncos send out their punter now as he'll punt it away for the second time. Just a two-yard return there following a punt of 48. And the Raiders will take over now first and 10. And now here come the Raiders. The last possession, these guys were able to tie the game with a touchdown, and now they'll have a chance to move out in front. Yeah, let's give a big assist to the defense who got the ball back. The special teams went out there and handled things. They've got it. They've got momentum. I know they're eager to get out there and put it on display. They'll run it now out of the gun. And a nice run past the 30-yard line there. A good run there on first down, and it'll leave them with a second and two. If these kinds of lanes are available, you have to feel like he's going to have a pretty big game on the ground. Yeah, you can tell early on he's got a little burst in his step, and that's a big pickup right there on first down. Back to the ground. This time it's Martin. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. Only three there on the pickup, but that's enough to move the chains. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. They run again on first down. Martin found a little room there as he's up to about the 37. Tackled by Bradley Chubb, the number five pick in the 2018 draft. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it, thank you. Now they'll throw with Carr. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. Oh, man, that was close. The opportunity to change momentum, big play, right in his hands, unable to come down with it. A sigh of relief, no doubt, on offense that that fell harmlessly to the ground. The Raiders on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. This will be third and six. From the gun, it's Carr. Is complete and he'll be taken down but not before he works it past the 50 his first catch and it's a pretty big one they get the conversion on third down nice catch right there brings to mind the sentence when in doubt find your veterans he used to laugh back in the day when they would call guys like him crafty veterans you, know, you get up in your 30s you're still playing receiver but you're around that long at that position you're doing something right just remember this when he was young he thought the crafty veteran was simply a guy who couldn't run anymore now he under pressure and he will go down sacked back at the 46 the man who won a super bowl mvp award across the bay in santa clara von miller in there to sack him for a loss of six protection certainly going to need to be a bit better here on second and 16. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And they won't fare much better here as he maybe gets back to the line. No gain on the play this time, and it'll be a third and long situation coming up. And as a defensive end, getting off the ball quickly, swarming to the football, making a tackle, that's what we saw right there. Yeah, and that's what their job is. And really, a lot of the time, they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends. They're like in a sprinter stance. They're just headed straight for the quarterback. That was good recognition on that play to hold them to no game. And it's hauled in by Jared Cook. And he'll go down shy of the 40 at the 41. It'll be a gain of 12, but it will also lead to fourth down. A lot of tight ends just use their size and their strength, try to occupy some space and kind of body people away and catch the football. But not this guy. He's a refined route runner. Makes me wonder if he took some dance classes in his background with his footwork. Car to throw for it on fourth down. Throwing the out route incomplete. It's Cook. And now this is going to depend on the spot. 
And they say he's just short. The Raiders try it on fourth down, but to no avail. And the Broncos will take over on downs. Keenum going to lead the Broncos up now first and 10 at their 38. Off play action, Keenum. And a big loss here as he's taken down. Well, so much for setting the tone of the drive offensively. Giving up a big sack that loses that kind of yardage, not a great start. After the sack, oh, they're staring at a challenge basically from the other side of town. It's second and a country mile. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll find some space up to about the 25. On the stop that time, Frosty Rucker. The Broncos on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This will be third and forever. From the gun, it's Keenum. He's going to loft one deep left side here. And a shot taken on third down, unsuccessful. Fourth down now. But well, we couldn't counting yardage on that one, didn't we? That was truly third and a mile, wasn't it? It was. I thought they might just go underneath, but they didn't. They wanted to get the first down there. Yeah, they tried to pick up the huge chunk unsuccessfully. I'm with you. I would have tried to take some yardage just to gain some field position. The Broncos send out their punter now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. A good return there, call it 13 yards. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. And now Oakland ready to take the field. Carr and the Raiders come up first and 10 at the 39-yard line. Now a play fake, Carr. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Well, one thing neat going on around the NFL again recently this year, we've seen this before, but the my cause, my cleats, it's just a chance for the players to give back to a certain charity that they like and dress up their shoes how they want. I know you saw that a couple weeks ago in your game. I certainly did. I had the Giants and the Bears, and during this time frame, each team is allowed to designate one home game for my cause, my cleats. And that was the Giants' home game. They designated it. And Alec Ogletree had a big game. I mean, he had a pick six for a touchdown, a bunch of tackles, and his cleats were for autism awareness. Mm. What a perfect time to put that on stage. His cause, his cleats, and a big game as well. The Raiders on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This is third and ten. Shotgun now for Carr. Caught by Nelson left side. And oh, so close as he takes it all the way to the two-yard line. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. As we continue to advance in the NFL, as people continue to scout players, they really don't care as much about body types as they care about those guys who can make people miss run through tackles, and gain all that additional run after catch. Anybody has that ability, they want them on their team. To throw his car. And it's caught. Roberts has it for a Raider touchdown. Seth Roberts, a two-yard touchdown grab. And the Raiders are able to cash in for six. An out route there for the score, a quick out route there for the score. Yeah, you're not really serving the defense on this one. You're just counting on timing, making this play happen. One, two, balls out of his hands, knows where he's going, just puts it to the outside. Touchdown. Extra point by Carlson, up and good. And that makes the score 14 to 7.
Carlson now to kick this one away. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. Now this Broncos offensive unit ready to head back out onto the field. And right now these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting because three straight drives have ended with him punting the football away. Yes, yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. And they'll go with a ground attack here. A very good move, but for a relatively modest gain out near the 32. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. And that's exactly what you want on a first down run. Pick up five yards, bring up second and five. The defensive line, though, they've got to figure out a way to out leverage the guys up front because the offensive line is winning at the point of attack. Keenum to throw on second down. And his throw is incomplete. I would say it'd probably be a good idea for him to reintroduce himself to his receivers at the half because they're definitely on different wavelengths. But I also don't advocate waiting that long. Next series before you get out there. Hey, let's get together, guys. Let's get this thing moving. The Broncos on third down. Two for five to this point. This will be third and five. Working from the gun, Keenum. And this is going to be incomplete. Well, they've had a pretty frustrating first half here offensively, and then just continued there with that incompletion. Yeah, definitely frustrating for them, but heartening for the other guys. Those stop troops, they're enjoying things right now because they've made it very difficult for them throughout the half. The Broncos send out their punter now. He's been terrific so far. Harris now to return. Almost out kicked his coverage there. 48 yard punt, but 10 on the return. And possession will switch hands first and 10. And now Oakland ready to take the field. And they were able to punch it in the end zone last time. They'll be looking to do that again here for the defense. Obviously, they'll be looking to stop them from punching it back in the end zone. It always is punch counter punch, isn't it? And which team has the advantage? Well, let's just go back. Last time on offense, they rolled downfield, got into a good rhythm. You can see a little more bounce in and out of the huddle. You can see the sideline really get into the game. So defensively, you're thinking to yourself, how do we take that away from them? How do we get the advantage back? Let's see what they come up with. I think pressure is always the first way to go. <laughs> you love pressure. We'll I see, love we'll it. We'll see if they dial it up this drive. A big hitter to start the drive has him up near midfield here for first and 10. Now a play fake here on first down. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. One thing I have learned, receivers don't mind high throws so much to the sideline but do that over the middle to them. And not only are the DBs going to throw a little verbal trash their way, when they get back to the huddle, they're going to have a few words to say to their QB, aren't they? Yeah, hung out to dry a little bit there on the high throw. Luckily, fell incomplete. Now Carr, after the incomplete pass, brings him up second and 10. They give to Martin. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. It'll go as a loss of a yard, and it'll set up third down. And yeah, that was a safety that came through and made the play, but there's no doubt in my mind, he hits like a linebacker, and we see a lot of that in today's NFL, don't we? And that time, we do indeed a big hit for a loss. Throwing his car on third down. And Cook has it, left side. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. They stop him for only three that time, and that'll bring up fourth down. So much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks. Don't let them get there. And they've rallied and made the tackle. Here now, Johnny Townsend as he'll kick it away for the second time. So the Broncos coming out now. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. Well, you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline, puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. 
He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. On first and ten, Keenum. He's just going to dump this one off to his fullback out of the backfield. Right off the bat, it's a first down to start the drive, 12 yards. And the big guy catches the ball out of the backfield, and oftentimes that's quite a surprise to guys playing defense because not ordinarily thought as a pass catcher, it often works when they decide to dial it up. This is Freeman on first and 10. Takes this up just short of the 30, but he was able to avoid that earlier tackle. Nice move. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. But no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And that play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield. That'll be a loss of a yard, and it leads to a third down. Double this guy has to be a priority before moving up to the next level because the big fella, he just ate that one alive, just stuffed it. In fact, before the game, he was talking to us, and he's like, hey, these pants make me look fat. And we said, nah, man, you're just a whole lot of guy. He is at well over 300 pounds. He's a big man. Now Keenan, open man is Holmes. And he gets it to the 32, good enough for a first down. It's the first time that they've looked his way tonight, and he comes up with a first down on the play. But give the defensive guys a little bit of credit. They didn't let the deep ball beat them on that play, did they? No, the, the drag, that guy can be your safety valve. We saw it right there. Yeah, and it picked up a first down for him, too. Keenum now, he's hit on just five of 15 throws, a poor percentage. But it's first and 10. Keenum. Sutton reeling it in on the left side. And he takes it all the way down to the three. A big play there on the catch and run. 65 yards. Coaches really don't care from what position they get this. But run after the catch ability, rack ability. It's often the difference between winning and losing and changing field position. A chance now to get even before the break as they come up first and goal. disaster and now on second and goal back even further laundry on the field this is going to be a false start on the offense sometimes you have to slow things down a little bit when things get heated the cadence has to be slow and deliberate at times to make sure your team's ready to go Things made a little more difficult after the false start as they try again on second and goal. Shotgun snap for Keenum. And the pressure gets to him again. Okay, let's go back a little bit and see if my schooling comes to the front. What's that old saying? Those who forget the lessons of history are doomed to repeat them. That's the same guy who's gotten back-to-back -back sacks. I think a double team may be in order. Need something from deep in the bag of tricks here after first and second down went backwards. It's third and very long. Out of the gun, Keenum. Wide open receiver complete. Now whistles and the Raiders are going to signal for a timeout. 
as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. So on fourth down, on comes Brandon McManus and the field goal unit for the Broncos. And McManus able to put it through. And they'll cut the lead back down to four now at 14-10. So the drive stalls out inside the 15-yard line, but they do get three. And I've talked with enough players nowadays that when they have these types of kicks, that no one says to their guy, hey, that's just like making an extra point piece of cake. Because the extra point is not a piece of cake anymore. <laughs> but kicking a field goal from that distance, just give him confidence and let him knock it through. After splitting the uprights, McManus to kick it away. The return man here, Dwayne Harris. And a good effort on the return there. Gets him across the 30 to the 33-yard line. And now Oakland ready to take the field. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. So they'll come up first in 10 now from the 33. They go play action here on first down. He's got this complete to Marcel Aitman. And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. It'll be a gain of 10 to start the drive out. And by a few inches, that'll be a first down. Partner, this is one of the best routes anyone can have in their offensive playbook. Tough to defend because you think it's a go route, and then he breaks it back on the comeback. But there's one other thing you need as well. A well-thrown ball. Exactly right. You have a guy who has some precision in throwing the football because of the timing of the route. Carr now on first down. Finds Roberts left side. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. And before this second down play, we'll get a whistle, a signal, and a timeout. As it comes with 22 seconds to go here in half number one. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. From midfield, here's Carr. Got an open man, it's Aitman. And now before this first down play, we're gonna get a timeout here. As the clock will stop with 18 seconds to go in the first half. Car now closing in on a 200 yard first half through the air. It's first and 10. Car to throw again. And this one caught along the sideline, but they say already out of bounds. And the throw didn't give him a chance to turn it upfield, and that brings up second down. So a challenge coming down from the booth, and that's where these challenges come from, of course, in the final two minutes of the half. Yeah, and now we're going to New York, right? That's command central for the officials. They'll talk, they'll take a look at it, communicate with the referee at the game site, and issue a final decision, because they do have the final call now. So on second down, the field goal unit is on here as they try to get three before half. This officially a 55-yard attempt. And that is no good. Oh, he missed it just wide of the upright. And this score will stay right where it is. And that's the risk of the long field goal miss here at this stage of the second quarter. You give up great field position. And that gives them one more opportunity 
to make something happen and something big. And we've seen crazy stuff happen at the end of halves. Good starting position for the Broncos here as they come up first and 10. Here's Keenum. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back complete. And we're going to get a timeout with two seconds remaining in the second quarter. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. The final shot before the break. Keenum into a double team and it's intercepted. Picked off by Rashawn Melvin. And his guys are going to take over at the 21-yard line. So we've reached halftime here in Oakland with the Raiders on top. As we'll send you back over to Orlando with our EA Sports Halftime Report, here's Jonathan Coachman. Here comes Nelson. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. Out comes the Raiders offense. They'll go on offense first to start quarter number three. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, get this a little time? Closer. Yeah, Blitz coming and down he goes. How about that? One of the so-called little guys putting the pressure on. That was a strong safety. When I was in college, we often called that a lightning blitz. Work to be done here on second and 16 after the sack. And a 10th carry here for Martin. And not a whole lot to speak of there as they'll bring him down shy of the 20. They get just a yard back there, and now they'll be looking at a tough third and 15. The Raiders on third down. They've hit four of seven. This will be third and 15. Now, we're waiting. From the gun, it's Carr. Over the middle, it's Jared Cook. And he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. They'll get 11, but it'll still lead to a fourth down. And after that completion, you can understand why so many teams in the league are emphasizing speed on defense at every position. The tight ends have created so many tough matchups now. If you can't run with a tight end as a linebacker, this is going to be the result every time. This is taken at about the 14. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Broncos take over, first down and 10. So now a look at the Broncos as they head back out there for their first possession of the second half. They were able to get the stop defensively. Now a chance really to set the tone here in quarter three. They can really take charge, can't they? And this is probably how it was drawn up at the half. I think we can go inside the locker room, all right? <laughs> and I think we would see up on the grease boards, stop them defensively, get the ball back for the offense, and let's go downfield and score. Seems simple, right? The last part, we have to find out that's going to happen. But the first part went to perfection. Did exactly what they wanted, and now their offense has to pay it off. See if they can get the latter 50%. Whether it's what we call an even front or an odd front, and an odd front's real easy to figure out. If that guy is lined up over the nose of the center, typically that's an odd front defense. Odd number of people, meaning 3-4 versus the 4-3, which is an even front. You've got to control those guys in the middle. Whether it's the nose or the two defensive tackles in a four-man front, if those guys can't get moved, you cannot run the ball in the middle of the field. And in that play, they were able to actually take care of business. Well, he was looking for some running room, and there wasn't a whole lot of it there on that play. I think he was lucky to get a couple yards out of it. So those defenders, they were rallying to the football pretty quickly. To throw on second down is Keenum. And he hits his target, Deshaun Hamilton. 12 yards there as they keep this drive rolling. It's another first down. 
You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. That's going to set him back five yards. So a little bit of a stiffer challenge now. First and 15 following the delay of game. Throwing is Kano. That'll be caught right side by Hamilton. Broncos on the move here a bit. Nice plays in succession back to back. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Keenum now on first down. He's got this complete to Hamilton. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. Chewing up big yardage. Another nice gain there. This one goes for 20. I think it all came together there in breaking route. Drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. Keenum now after the pick on the last drive. Three for three to start this drive. It's first and ten. Now a handoff. It's Freeman. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the ten to the seven. Twelve more yards there and another first down. Partner, if you want more carries, I think we saw how you get them. Showed that he's got the fresh legs, and he picked up the first down on that run. Don't just ask for him. Show him that you're supposed to get the football. A shotgun snap for Keenum. Finding a safety valve here. That's complete. And he'll get this down inside the five to the four before he's out of bounds. Three yards is the gain that time, second and goal. Well, this is how you shake the thoughts of that interception on the last drive. You come out and start this one four for four. And watching him throw it around with that type of confidence reminds me of a guy I played with way back when who told me, I don't care if I throw 10 interceptions in a row, I'm going to stay confident and keep flinging it. I just figured there's something wrong with the football. He's going to get it running right. And he'll get in. Touchdown, Denver. Royce Freeman taking it in from four yards out. And the Broncos are in for six. That's it, baby. And nothing special there. They show they were going to run the football. They ran it. They got it in. Like old-time football, right? Hey, this is exactly what we're going to do. Straight ahead power, and they got it done. Extra point from McManus is good. And it's now 17-14. Now McMahon Manis on to kick this one off. Here's Harris to return it. Solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32-yard line. Now the Raiders offense, they get set to head back on the field. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with a game this close, You've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. On first and 10, here's Carr. And brought in by the tight end, Cook. And on the 42-yard line here and brought down there. 10 yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", 6'5", and up. 
A lot of guys used to be basketball players, somehow came back to football. That's really good for the game of football. You get better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination, guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. And complete right side to Cook. And he'll be brought down right at the 45-yard line. A Raiders first down, Carr hooking up with Cook. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then of course they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play. And that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. First down, here's the run with Martin. And he'll be brought down at the 50 after a gain of about five. across midfield and into Denver territory. It'll be a pickup of a couple and it leaves him with a third and three. The Raiders on third down. They're at 50%, four for eight. This time it's third and three. Here's Carr. And that is incomplete. I'm not sure we could spot any tendency here on this third down. They could have run it or passed it. Either one was available. They chose to try and get it through the air, but they run successful. Here now, Johnny Townsend, as he's on to punt for the fourth time tonight. He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. And not what he was hoping for there, as this will hit in the end zone for a touchback. And Denver getting set to take the field. Last time they were out here, they had the benefit of good field position, led to a touchdown. This time, they're going to have to work for it. They are, but with that last drive that culminated in a touchdown, I think they carry that confidence into this one. It doesn't matter where you start with the football now. They have to feel great about their opportunity. And on the ground they go with a running back. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Marcus Gilchrist there to bring him down. And he had a nice play there from his free safety position to hold him to nothing. And, Brandon, remember when the free safety was always back away from the line of scrimmage? That's changed. They always <laughs> that changed in a big way. The way we see it now, they're almost mirrors between the free safety and the strong safety. One will be up, one will be back, or sometimes both will be in the same spot. On that play, the free safety was there, no gain. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. And the Raiders have recovered. So the defense there, opportunistic. It's nice to give them credit, isn't it? Because so many times it's more a matter of what the offensive guy didn't do. Didn't secure the ball, didn't cover up. In this case, let's just give credit to where it belongs. Knocked it free, made a big play. Give him two yards on that one. Second and goal now. Defensively, pretty good start there with their backs against the wall. That's a win for the stop troops right there. And if I'm them, I get a little bolder now. They won the first battle, keep coming after them, put the pressure on them. The six-yard line, the line of scrimmage on second and goal. Now Carr. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Sua Cravens in there to bring him down for a loss of seven. Second goal, last thing you need to do is get pushed backwards to take a sack, but he couldn't find anywhere to go with the football, had to eat it, and ended up on the ground. Carr and the Raiders following the sack, looking up at a third and long. Shotgun now for Carr. And this is Carr. Touchdown, Raiders. Marcel Aitman, a 12-yard touchdown grab. And the Raiders take advantage of field position on the turnover to cash this one in. 
Well, that's what I call an answer right there. They gave up a sack on the previous play. How about what they did to finish things off, turning it right back around? That's the response, and that O-line feels a lot better now, don't they? Yeah, without a doubt, because give up the sack in the previous play, that just hurts those guys, because they never want to see their guy get hit. Carlson now to add the extra point. Extra point by Carlson, up and good. And that will make this a four-point game. now to kick this one away. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. And coming out now, the Broncos. And they had the fumble last time that led to a touchdown. That's a no-no. We'll see what they do here this go-around. A big no-no. Put that in capital letters. Turning it over, the other team takes it down and scores. That can be a deflator for a football team. Now it's up to the offense to get back out on the field and pick things up. Now they're out there. We'll see if they can pick those things back up. And they'll go on the ground. They'll only get a couple up to about the 30. Partner, you know I love to point out when teams break tendency and do something a little bit different from the norm. But when you run the ball in the first play of the drive, that's not a tendency breaker at all. That's just trying to establish yourself as you move forward. On play action, it's Keenum. And Sutton hauls it in over the middle. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. With that catch, he goes over 100 yards receiving on the night. Fired that one in there, able to make connection on a nice in route. With those faster passes when they're going that fast, any hesitation as a quarterback that the deflection, if you miss, might be bigger and lead to an interception? Yeah, and the deflection works both ways. Maybe a defender gets a hand in the way and it pops in the air. And sometimes you throw it so hard your receiver can't handle it, and he pops it up in the air for the defenders to grab as well. But a moot point there is they were able to connect. It was Maurice Hurst who got him down. Early down stuff to put this offense in a precarious position. We know the securing the point of attack, especially against the big bodied guys in the middle of this D, has got to be priority one. And they'll go ground game here with a tailback. And they're well past midfield, just a yard or two shy of the 40. That one going for a gain of 11 and a Bronco first down. They're making it look easy out there. Another first down. So, so far on this drive, let me do this little bit of math here. Four plays, three first downs. That's a pretty good recipe for success. So here's a first and 10 now in Raider territory at the 42-yard line. Back now in the East Bay. It's the Broncos trailing, but they do have possession of the football as we begin quarter number four. On first down, Keenum. Throw left side, it's reeled in by Hamilton. And he gets this down inside the 35 before going out of bounds. Give him nine there on the first down completion. If you run an out route, it's likely you end up near the sideline. And what did we just see there? The toe tap. You got it, the benefits of practice. Toe tapping, foot dragging, picking it up and making sure it was a catch. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he gets it down to the 32. Only a gain of a yard, but that's all they needed is that's going to move the chains. Well, that was a unit that understood exactly where the first down marker was, handed it to their guy who could run it, created some space, and he got there. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. On first down, it's Keenum. His throw incomplete. 
I know our vantage point might be a little bit better way up here, but that looked like an ill-advised throw to me. I didn't see anything open, and this play just didn't look right from the beginning. It did not. I thought he might get outside and just chuck it away. Dangerous pass, incomplete. Here's second and 10 now from about the 32. Second and 10, Keenum here again. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And he'll be brought down at the 27-yard line. Four yards on the pickup, and that's going to lead to a third down. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. The Broncos on third down. They've converted three times and eight chances. This will be third and six. Out of the gun, Keenum. And he's got his man out of the backfield. That's complete. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. That one going for a gain of 11 and a Bronco first down. He's having a nice game through the air. His decision-making's been really good, solid there again, just seeing nothing downfield goes underneath. Nice game. How about the patience? Because when you're having a big game through the air, you're looking for those chunk plays, those big ones downfield. Instead, as you noted, takes the check down, dumps it off, gains good yardage anyway. Really well executed. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the 9. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Able to get 7 on that first down pass play. Second and 3. Keenum to throw again. And he just chucked that one out of bounds, out of everyone's reach. Maybe a wise call not to take a sack in this part of the field. It brings up third down. What's the old adage? Be quick, but don't hurry. Well, that went right out the window there. He was hurried, harassed. <laughs> that ball had to be gotten rid of. Otherwise, he was going to get sacked. The Broncos on third down. Not quite 50%. Four for nine. Here it's third and three. Throwing again is Keenum. And almost intercepted. Would have been a huge pick in the end zone, but as it stands, that brings up fourth. I guess they're in a situation now, fourth quarter, where they're forced to take some chances, but I don't know that that was the type of a chance you want to take. And that one could very easily have been intercepted. And if it does get picked off, that could possibly seal this one. And they'll run it here. And he won't have the touchdown, but he will have the first down as he's tackled at the two. They get six yards going for it on fourth, and now it's first and goal. Well, remember, they could get the first down without getting the touchdown. And he's able to fight all the way down to the two-yard line. So it's a big conversion there on fourth down. And now they'll get four more shots from there. Only way to get the lead here, of course, with a touchdown. And that's what they're gunning for on first and goal. They'll look to run with Freeman. And this will result in him losing yardage. Back to the three. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. Oh, partner, that play brought back memories. Watching them string it out, letting the runner get all the way to the sideline area, but not letting him get out of bounds. They formed that picket fence and didn't allow him through. Not only that, got him for a loss as well here. And one of the reasons they lead in the fourth quarter, plays like that. Yeah, it took a little more time off the clock, making him do it that way, didn't it? Now a second down throw for the end zone, but it's incomplete. Brandon, some of those windows that throw the football that exist when you're between the 20s, they don't exist when you're this close to the goal line. But as a former DB, I liked it closer to the goal line. Tighter windows made it easier to cover people, actually. This Raider defense not giving in. They'll try to hold once more on third and goal. From the gun, here's Keenum. And this is going to be incomplete. I know every offense wants to start their snaps closer to the goal line, but it's actually harder to throw the ball in those situations. You throw into that tight coverage, you see what happens. Hard to get the ball in there. Not enough space there. Lucky maybe that it wasn't intercepted. Likely the play of the game here, trailing in the final quarter and going for it on fourth and goal. 
Oh, and now movement and a whistle, and they may have to rethink their plans on fourth down. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. From the left hash, should be a fairly easy one here. And McManus able to put it through, and the drive will wind up yielding three. So with that field goal, this one's now back within a field goal. Maybe not the ultimate result they wanted, but gets them that much closer. This game is unfolding like a really good book, isn't it? Because I feel like there's a few more plot twists yet to be revealed before this one is over. After splitting the uprights, McManus to kick it away. Here's Harris to return it. And nice work on the return as he'll start their drive just past the 30-yard line. So out come the Raiders. I guess the good news as they start this drive is that they, they still do have the lead, Charles. If their defense hadn't been able to hold them to a field goal on the other side, they'd be down. But now it's about preserving that very small lead. It is preserving and maybe stretching it out a little bit. Because if you're a starter on that side of the ball, I certainly hope you didn't loosen up your shoulder pads or start to cut the tape off. Because if you did, you did it way too soon. They've got to go back out there with renewed vigor, for lack of a better term but also a good plan. They need points, and they need them now. Boy, tight game like this, fourth quarter, personal foul penalties, a no-no. Yeah, we know the emotions are running high. The tensions are the same. Who can control them best could ultimately win it. And now it's first and ten. A big mistake, especially when you factor in the personal foul yardage. Now a play fake here on first down. On the crossing route, complete. That's Cook. And he works it past the 30, almost to the 25. Give him a first down, 15 yards that time for the Raiders. Well, how about this aggressive approach? Got the lead, fourth quarter, continuing to throw the football. Are you thinking about Super Bowl 51? <laughs> Atlanta had the lead against New England, just, and they ended up giving it up. I was going to say, don't say it, but you did say it. it I did, didn't I? Yeah, anybody watching Atlanta, our apologies. <laughs> they go play action here on first down. Oh, incomplete. A turnover would have really helped there. Almost intercepted. Instead, it's just second down. I think he's taking an awful chance with the football right there. You've got a lead. You've got to protect it. And he's taking chances, putting it out there in a little bit of jeopardy. Especially in a spot like this, fourth quarter, as you said, trying to cling to that advantage. Yeah, that one probably should have been picked, huh? Four down, four down. Down. Four down, four down. Down. Carl will try it again on second down. And he comes back with one complete. That catch puts him over 70 yards receiving now as he's got a first down. They had two tight ends in the formation on that one. It looked to me like he had his pick of receivers downfield. I think he was just planning on going over the middle. That's what he did. Picked up first down, too. Carr now a perfect 8-for-8 eight eight to start the second half. Not bad. First and 10. And off comes to Martin. And he'll get about three just outside the 10, staffed at the 11. It's going to be a six-yard gain. It leaves him with third down and just a yard to go. And once again, leverage wins. The offensive line, lower than the defensive front. They moved him and found some good space for the guy carrying the ball. The Raiders on third down. They've hit on half of them, five for ten. They're up against a third-and-one situation. Now Carr. And he'll take it into the end 
zone for a Raider touchdown. Third touchdown pass now for Derek Carr. And the Raiders add six to their lead. Well, it was third and one. I was expecting run so much for that. They pass it, they score it. That had the feel of the head coach telling the offensive coordinator, you've got four downs here. We're going to go for it on fourth down unless there's a disaster on third. Go ahead and take a shot if you want to. And he gratefully accepted the opportunity and did exactly that. If they didn't get it there, that had the feel that they would come back and try it on fourth down. Carlson now to kick this one away. This one fielded at the five. Solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32-yard line. And Denver getting set to take the field. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. On play action. Now Keenum. He's going to let this one go deep. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. Here's second and 10 now from about the 32. to the air. Keenum on second down. Over the middle. He's got Deshaun Hamilton. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of, until they stop him, why not go back to it? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. They fake the handoff. Now Keenum over the middle complete. It's Hamilton. And the play goes nowhere. Losing yardage back near the 40 at the 39. It'll wind up being a loss of two. And that'll bring up fourth down. The Broncos send out their punter now as he'll come on for his fifth kick of the night. And this will hit just beyond the goal line as it's into the end zone for a touchback. The Raiders offense now making their way back out onto the field. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he'll get about three as he's taken down at the 23. But Brandon Pace comes into play now because they've got the advantage, they've got the football, but they've got to be very careful about what speed they're going to play. You know, my, my music teacher back at New Paltz, Mrs. Bythema Bagley, used to say, don't go prestissimo when you really want to go Largo. And what she meant by that is don't go too fast when you really want to go at a nice, slow, deliberate pace. I am speechless. I am without speech. Got an open man. It's Aitman. And he'll be corralled right around the 34. That one will go as a gain of 11. Raiders having a first down as well. Defensively, they're okay with that. Short little route. Tackle him inbounds. Okay. All right, cliche alert. It's time for someone to make a play because they've got to have something bigger downfield. They can't just take what they give them. They've got to force it and make something big happen for them. Get down, get down. They run, Martin. And an alley to run. And he'll be tackled right on the chalk at a 45. Back-to-back 11-yard -back gains, and they've got another first down. Uh, he's still rumbling, isn't he? Still looking fresh in this one despite the heavy workload. 
but you and I both know. Well conditioned, and he did tell us that he thrives on being at his peak late in ball games. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 45-yard line. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. He continues to struggle to find a crease to break off a big one and might need to just put that aside and just try and ram his way forward and get what he can. If nothing else, they've already taken a couple minutes off the clock here already as they come up second down. You'd have to think likely another running play coming here, second and 11. We got head, head, head down. Wide 85. Now Carr throwing on second down. And he almost had it defensively. Could have been a game changer there in this second half. Instead, it's third down. I think he's a little trigger happy right there, and it turned into an ill-advised throw into their zone. Well, we know he has confidence. He'll throw it any place, any time, anywhere. That time it fell incomplete. Now, this is a big third down, and you'd have to think we'd see a timeout right away if they can't stop him here. Hey, 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 hey. Four down, four down, four down. Down, 185. Third down, it's Doug Martin. And a minimal gain here as he's up to about the 47-yard line. Whistles now and a timeout. So defensively, they burn it here with 151 left. Here now, Johnny Townsend as he's on to punt for Oakland. Broncos coming hard, and it's blocked. And a blocked punt always can be such a momentum swing. In a big way, because now the spark has been lit. Everyone gets involved with that team. And many times, coaches preach, you block a punt, you block a kick, that usually leads to victory. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Back to throw. This caught. Reception by Holmes. That one going for a gain of 11. And a Bronco first down. First down now, but that clock rolling. He's back to throw. And that is incomplete. He was unable to complete it there, and just not the game that you would expect from him. He's been off the mark really start to finish. Yeah, it makes you wonder what exactly is going on. Is he a little bit dinged up here? Or is it just off just by a bit? Maybe he can get it back in this situation. He'll need to. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and 10. He'll look to throw. And incomplete on the deep ball. This defense is continuing to contest every deep ball that is thrown downfield. And look, it doesn't matter whether you're playing man or zone, eventually that becomes man on man. And you've got to trust yourself and go up at that moment of truth and make a play on the football. So back to back incompletions, and that has them staring at a third and 10. Back to throw. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Hamilton. And he'll get it here to the 10-yard line. Just a five-yard pickup, and it leads to fourth down. They'll look to throw. And, oh, a crusher there as it's intercepted. Picked off by Carl Joseph. Well, they needed the touchdown and the two-point conversion, but they're not going to get a shot at either. This is a great play here defensively, Brandon, and at a time that they sorely needed one. And that could be enough to help get them out of here with a victory. And he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. Another yard would probably put this thing in the books. It's second and one. Again, it's Martin. And for one of the first times tonight, he's going to be held up at the line of scrimmage. 
And now we're going to get a timeout here called by the defense as they stop it here with just under 40 seconds to go in the game. down to a knee and that ought to just about do it listen anytime you take a knee to end a game that means you've won it so it doesn't matter whether it's home or on the road but there's something a little extra special about <laughs> doing it in front of your home crowd isn't there and the home crowd applauding they're happy with what they've seen chalk this one up in the left hand column for a win yeah that's right head to the locker room throw the wristbands in the crowd for the kids your gloves your towels get to share it with the home team well, going into the final play of this game, they knew that they needed some type of a miracle there at the very end, but they couldn't get it done. However, we were treated to really a spectacular affair. Even though they didn't finish it off, you're exactly right. They took us down to the last play. We're still, you're wondering, could it happen? Possibly, even though we both knew it was a long shot. So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gauden. This has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. The Black Hole celebrates the Raiders are winners here as we say so long from Oakland.